very good morning vidyarthi mitro <clears throat> as you all know under this section of spoken english and grammar today's topic we have is past tense today uh, in the studio uh, we have dr dilip barad with us and we too are going to talk on the past tense so shall we begin until now we have talked about the simple present tense and the all three present tenses we have also talked on and about nouns and adjectives this lecture is solely devoted to past tenses so let us begin look at the first slide please as i told you earlier we have talked about the basic the use of the tenses but today we will talk about this portion especially that is past tense well dear friends we see on the screen the definition of past tense which reads like simple past tense is used to indicate those actions which are committed in the past tense the actions which are completed in the previous time and when we have to speak something about those we have to make use of some verbs and those verbs those verb patterns in a way tell us about the past tense as we know dear friends that verbs are the soul of english grammar when we speak about employability in in the in the case of uh empowering our our students with the help of communication skills the power of communicative english is very important and in that verb plays a very very important and a key role without having a power over verb patterns in the usage of the verb one will always falter in having an appropriate and correct communication so here today when we concentrate on the past tense of the forms verbs also will play a very important role so there are those parts of speech where verb plays a very key role and those verbs specifically today we'll speak about that how they are converted uh, uh, our communication into the past form of uh, things so coming back to the definition we see here that when i have to say something about what has happened in past then i will use the uh, the form of the structure which is known as the uh, past tense of the verb form let us see some of the examples Well, I studied medicine in Bangalore. Next slide. Uh, they played cricket at Lords. Or say, for example, she took a ride in the new car. Well, coming to the first sentence again, I studied medicine in Bangalore. Well, if I have to say something about the past tense, and if studied is an appropriate verb pattern here. then i would like to add one more word here i studied medicine in the bangalore in 2007 so that shows that it was somewhere in the past tense and this particular thing has happened there so this is the time frame which we give that something has happened in the in the past tense have a look at the structure of this kind of sentences huh? if we have a first person singular then the pattern is s v o where v will be the past form of the verb the similarly in the singular as well as in the plural second person also the same kind of a pattern svo will be followed uh, similarly in the third person also next slide i would suggest to mr h i sarvayar to carry on with uh, negative sentences and interrogative sentences thank yes dr bar thank you now uh, we have already seen uh, the sentence patterns of uh, present tenses also the basic uh, frame svo still remains here as it is the only thing is that the verb is taken care of the past tense of the verb is to be put over here now look at the slide especially we are talking about interrogative and negative sentences slide please when we make sentences in the negative or the interrogative then there are some major changes in the person wise structure if you remember students we talked about this earlier when we were talking about the present tense as well the use of do is also required here but in a did form the past tense of the look at the examples first the structure subject plus did not now present form of the verb is required remember friends students generally make mistakes 
uh, while making this negation of simple past tense sentences, uh, they use past tense verb. Actually, we are supposed to use present form of the verb here plus object. Look at example. I did not go to college yesterday. But we cannot say we did not went to college yesterday because, you know, this is a common error we generally commit. Well, sir, I would like to say here. Yes. Uh, can yes. we see the same slide again? Oh, sure. Why not? Well, what, uh, this is something that uh, normally all the students make a mistake here, that uh, when there is a deed which it insel itself carries the past form of the tense, and then we don't have to repeat the past tense of the form again. Exactly. So that is go, went, and gone. Yes, of course. Yes. Uh, uh, it's a very good example that go is taken here, because later on when we'll study about the past perfect tense, this will be very helpful, very helpful. to concentrate Absolutely. that why it is Absolutely. went and not gone also. Exactly. Especially when, when you are in hest, you commit such mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, it yes. happens. Yes. So let, it, uh, let us look at the few more examples and structures, please. The one more example is, we did not eat dinner yesterday night. And we cannot, of course, say we did not eat dinner yesterday night. Yes. You know? True. Yeah. So uh, um, uh, again, look at the structure. Second person, singular and plural. The same structure remains here. No changes. Did not plus present form of the verb. Same is the case with third person singular and plural as well. So on an average, the pattern remains same. We have to remember did not plus present form of the verb. This is the uh, uh, point we have to take care of. Now, uh, friends, a uh, few more examples. You did not come <coughs> for the meeting or she did not buy the new book. They did not study for the exam at all. So all these three examples, you can see the underlined verb. They all belong to present form of the verb. Look at a beautiful video here in support to whatever we have discussed until now on and about simple past tense. But uh, this video uh, will tell you a little on and about negative of the simple past tenses. This video lesson deals with forming the negative of the simple past. Now to form the negative of a sentence in the simple past, you need to use the past form of the auxiliary verb do, that is did, plus not, plus the infinitive of the verb you want to use. For example, I did not play. Now we often contract did and not into one word. Didn't, D-I-D, N, apostrophe T. For example, I didn't play, they didn't play, she didn't play. Notice that did and didn't are invariable. That means they never change, no matter what pronoun you're using. The same rule applies for irregular verbs. Let's look at the irregular verbs leave, come, and teach. I didn't leave, we didn't come, he didn't teach. Now here's an example with the very common irregular verb to go. She went to school yesterday is in the affirmative and in the negative she did not go to school yesterday. Remember that went is the past form of the verb to go. I went, I didn't go, I went. Now for regular verbs it's very simple. She talked to Martin last week we had the ED for the simple past. And in the negative, she did not talk to Martin last week. Now you try and make a few sentences in the negative using the simple past. They studied English in 2006. In the negative, it's... They did not study English in 2006. Tim played golf when he was at university, and in the negative, it's Tim did not play golf when he was at university. We are supposed to use the present form of the verb. So this was the same uh, uh, example of the uh, video. So structure also remains same as I mentioned earlier. But let us talk about the interrogative now. Say for an example, in negative we have used did not. Now in this, 
as was the case in present tense also, simple present tense also, the way we used to put does uh, in the initiation of the sentence pattern, here we put did plus subject plus present form of the verb again. Okay? So, same rule applies here also, plus object and plus question mark, a very small thing, but we have to remember this. Say for an example, did I give you the book yesterday? So, give is the present form. But as I mentioned earlier, we can't say did I give you the book yesterday. So, sentence patterns once again, first person plural as well, similar, singular and plural second person and third person remain same. There is no change in the sentence patterns of simple past tense in all the persons and singular and plural. Few more example. Did you submit the form last week? Second person we see. Did she drive the new car last evening? Did they come for the party? Third person. So, if we make a total of all this, use of simple past tense is to talk about actions and situations in the past, as Dr. Barad mentioned this earlier. And secondly, when an incident is being narrated or a story is being told, we would look all these things again when we would come across a beautiful video on and about the same. So, one more time, he went to the cinema. There he met his friends, Umesh, friend Umesh. They ate ice cream. They saw the movie together. They came back at 8 o'clock. So, the, in support to the same things, whatever we talked about, interrogation, negation, and overall on simple past tense, this is a beautiful video by uh, Jennifer, which is uh, freely available on YouTube, friends. So, you can also go through such sites and um, uh, get uh, come across such videos, which will be really educational and will be very helping to you. Uh, recognizing and understanding the simple past tense. Let, let us look at the video, please. Watch and listen. I want something to eat. Hmm, maybe candy. I'll just take one piece. Yeah. Oh, but there's an apple. Okay, I'll put this back. And I'll eat the apple, not the candy. Reading. The following text describes what you saw in the video. Can you find all the verbs in the simple past tense? What happened in the video? Jennifer was at the kitchen table. She wanted to eat something. First, she thought about eating candy. She opened the candy jar in front of her and took out a piece. Now take a moment and try to find the verbs in the simple past tense. Do you see them? Here they are. Happened. Was. Wanted. Thought. Opened. Took. Let's go on to the second half of the text. Then she looked at the apple. In the end, she didn't eat the candy. She put it back and ate the apple. That was a good choice. As before, I want you to find the verbs in the simple past tense. Do you see them? Let me show you. The verbs in the simple past are looked, didn't eat, put, ate, was. How did you do? Were you able to find them all? Don't worry if you found the first exercise a little difficult. I'm going to show you all the forms that the simple past tense can use. Then in the future, it will be easier for you to recognize it. So now we'll turn our attention to the forms and meanings of the simple past tense. We'll look at the verb to be, regular verbs, and irregular verbs. 
In the simple past tense, the verb to be has two forms, was and were. Was is used with singular nouns, uncountable nouns, and the pronouns I, she, he, and it. Examples. I was hungry. She was in the kitchen. There was candy in the jar. Candy is an example of an uncountable noun. The apple was a good choice. This is an example of a singular noun. Were is used with plural nouns, compound subjects, and the pronouns you, we, and they. Examples. You were hungry. The apple and candy were on the table. Apple and candy being a compound subject. There were many pieces of candy in the jar. Pieces is an example of a plural noun. We often use the verb to be in the simple past tense to tell about a past event, state, or condition. Examples. Jennifer was at the kitchen table. She was hungry. All of this happened in the past. All of this was true in the past. I'm telling you about my location and how I was feeling. I was at the kitchen table. I was hungry. Okay, now that we've covered the verb to be, we're going to talk about all the other verbs. We'll group them into regular verbs and irregular verbs. In the simple past, regular verbs end in ed. Can you identify the regular verbs from the text? There are six verbs highlighted in orange. Can you find the three regular verbs? They are wanted, opened, and looked. These verbs are easier to recognize and use once you know the spelling rules. Here are the spelling rules for forming regular verbs. Rule 1. Add ed to a verb that ends in a consonant. Examples. Want ends in t, so we get wanted. Look ends in k, so we have looked. Rule 2. If a verb ends in consonant, vowel, consonant, double the last consonant before adding ed. Stop is a good example. It ends in T-O-P, consonant, vowel, consonant. So we're going to double the P and then add E-D, and we get stopped. There are a couple of exceptions to rule number two. First, don't double the consonants W, X, Y. For example, in fixed, we only write one X. The second exception is with unstressed syllables. Don't double the last consonant if the last syllable is unstressed. For example, in open, the stress is on the first syllable, so you do not double the N. Rule 3. Add only D to a verb that ends in E. For example, we'll add D to like and get liked. Rule 4. If a verb ends in Y, Change the Y to an I, and then add ED. For example, the verb carry. Before we add ED, we change the Y to an I, and then we get carried. There's one exception to Rule 3. That's when there's a vowel before Y. For example, in play, we have A before Y. We will not change the Y to an I. We'll simply add ED, played. So, uh, I hope you all might be knowing such basic rules on and about uh, simple past tense, especially um, in such verbs, uh, you are supposed to put ed, in the other words, you just pronounce it differently and all that. That is one more small video, which would also...